Chancellor Wami here with uh, great alumnus Todd Deloney. Uh, we are here on the campus of IU Northwest. Uh, specifically, we're here on the corner of a 35th and Broadway. This is the location in back in 1990 where Todd Deloney embarked upon his one person march uh, to advocate for the closing of IU Northwest in recognition of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Todd, it is an honor to be here with you today. Welcome home, my friend. Thank you, thank you, Chancellor. Thank you, thank you. It, it, and it feels good to be welcomed back home. <laughs> so maybe uh, we could start out if you could just tell us a little bit about the impetus and the the reason where you know you found yourself at this location back in 1990 to embark upon your journey and your march for closure of IU Northwest. Okay, yeah, great. Well, the first the the, the first is the first point that I'd like to make is that as a student. I felt that I could not celebrate the holiday as I chose fit because I'd have to attend classes. The only institution that was open in Gary was this institution. And um, I remember as I was coming over the bridge, over the uh, expressway, I saw that the campus was full and I just determined, okay, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. And, and, and so I came home right down the street here uh, had, a, had a few cardboard signs, wrote on them, and started setting out on my march. And, and I just, just had to go for it. Just had to go for just it. Had to go for it. Well, if it's okay with you, I would love to, even though it's a little cold today, probably similar to back in 1990 when you did a march. Right, right. So if you could do it back then, I can do it with you today. Oh, if we could recreate some of those steps, sure. I think that would be fantastic. Sure. You could maybe tell us a little about the journey along the way. Sure. Okay? All right. All right let's sure. go. Let's go. So Todd, as uh, we're walking down uh, 35th Avenue towards Jefferson Street, which is explained as part of your route, uh -huh. uh, you know, I can't imagine what was going through your head, especially those first steps, you know, the courage that you must have taken. And, you know, so what was going through your mind, you know, as, as you started the route around our campus? Well, when I got started, it was like, Stan, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Then I took that first couple steps to like, yes, okay, this is what I should be doing. Okay, that was the first move that I had felt like, this is how you get your groove back, okay? Uh, and, 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 you know, it, it's like coming, just walking through this section. It's, it, it, it's similar to walking on the air. You know, because I really, really, really was doing this and, and I'm thinking, do I have the juice to see it through? Okay, that was, that was, what, that was basically my next thought. Do I have the juice to see it through? Because, see, at that time, I was still having difficulty maintaining a thought. Why is that? Well, d due to the stroke. So, so in, in addition, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing story you're, you're telling us, Todd, because in addition to, you know, the cause uh, for uh, MLK Day being right. observed in, in, in the way you, you thought respectful and appropriate, uh, right. you know, it's also personal for you in oh, terms yeah. of your, your personal journey from, from your medical condition to actually be able to be here and walk. Right, 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 right. And, and you know what, uh, uh, I can say, say this for, for the IUN. Uh, that uh, are you in looked out for me? I'm glad to hear that. Doc. You know, uh, when you relay this to me, it it um, it reminds you uh, a little bit about a quote about faith by Martin Luther King Jr. and and uh, I'll try to get this as accurate as possible. This quote attributed to him, which is, you know, faith is taking that first step when you. Uh, don't even see the full staircase. And yeah. so, you know, you don't know what's gonna, uh, what you're gonna face turning that corner on Jefferson Street. Exactly. You don't know what, how you're gonna be received, like you said, yet you still made those steps. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think that um, that major impetus 
was that I had to get my groove back. I have to do something. I have to do, you know, it, it's almost like a desperation, if you will. You got to. I had to do something. I had to do something. I didn't know what. I didn't know, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I knew and I felt in my heart that uh, this is the type of thing that I need to be doing in order to promote uh, a recovery from the stroke. So Todd, if, if, uh, if your game, uh, maybe you can lead the way and we can continue your walk. Okay, great, great. Okay, great. So uh, Todd, I th we're here uh, as uh, Jefferson uh, Street turns into 33rd uh, Avenue on, on our campus as part of as part of your uh, recreation of your walk, your march, and uh, you know we talked about not knowing really what to expect right, as, right. as you're marching around campus, and so I know this is kind of an area of significance uh, right. for, for your journey. So can can you explain maybe what what happened here? Well, uh, as I I'd say roughly about 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes after I, I got it started, I was walking, as I was coming around this area, around this turn, I heard, inward, go home, inward, go home. And something just sailed right past me. And I'm looking, and I see some rocks just landing in the snow and whatnot. Whoa, wait a minute. Again, uh, that feeling that, oh, so this is what they had to do, you know, uh, Dr. King and, and those guys. And then uh, the third time. Because you, you walked the campus multiple right, times. Right, right, time. right, right, right. I was, all I was you, doing, okay. saying nothing, saying yeah. nothing, just walking and whatnot. And by the way, after about the third, you know, about the, the first hour, and the, yeah, about the first hour, as I started to walk, I started to um, have people honking their horns. So is this, oh, this is more positive. Right. Okay, right, so you right. had some positive with the horrible negative right, as well too. Right, right, right. And, and then, possibly dangerous. And you know, exactly. Yeah. And then when it, you know, that steeled my resolve to stay out here. You know, I came back around again, and next thing I know, I, a bottle is, that's when, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought about my buddy, uh, Levonis Talbert. Okay. Okay. So you're worried about conflict. Right? Yeah, yeah, no conflict. yeah. And, and, and I, I thought, nah, <laughs> I just better I leave, leave homeboy alone <laughs> because if something had happened, he would have done what he's likely to do. He wasn't a nonviolent type of guy. Okay. Okay. And uh, that would have just killed the whole vibe. You know, it's 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 maybe it's not amazing, but to me it's amazing as as, as a young man, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're not the person you are now, you know, with right, with right. years of experience. Right. But even back then, you know, the principles of nonviolence protest, it, it 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 was it was part of your, I guess, DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. Say, no, 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 no. You, you shut your mouth. Just keep walking around the campus. Just keep walking around the campus. Just keep walking around the campus. Um, but again, you know, in, in doing that, I really got a real taste, you know, of what it could have been like, you know, in the uh, uh, 50s and 60s. Yeah. But if something had happened, then uh, that would have uh, made the whole, whole demonstration a wash. So I decided against it, and uh, the rest is history.
So Todd, here we are, here you we know, are. In, in, in of our, our recreation of your, of your march so long ago, uh, probably not as nearly as exciting as, <laughs> as what you experienced <laughs> back in 1990. But I know you ended up right around here, you know, right. in front of the, uh, you know, Anderson Library building. Right. Um, and so if I could ask you, you know, uh, you know, looking back all those years, you know, what was going through your mind in terms of, that was 1990. Right. Uh, so what was going through your mind in terms of next steps, in your, if you had any? Right. Well, well, the next steps was were uh, p the plans that I developed as I was walking. Okay. Right. As I was walking, I was thinking the thought that the students, the students didn't really know what I was doing, or or probably looking out the window like, who is this knucklehead walking out here in the cold and whatnot? <laughs> but I had a plan. See, the plan was to conduct a silent vigil at the end of Black History Month for that year. In 1990. In 1990, right, because um, I didn't know whether or not the Black Student Union had anything going on, but I said, well, still, we need something. I need something to keep to, to keep the uh, students interested. Well, you know, Todd, you talked about, uh, you also shared with me a story that after your march in 1990, your one-person march, the yeah, administrator actually uh, said to you uh, around this area at the, at the conclusion of the march, Todd, we hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, yeah, that was uh, um, the first, during the, during the first march, yeah. as I was closing out, yeah. walking through here, and uh, I, it was Dr. Bill May. Okay. And I forget the other guy that he was walking with, but he said, okay, okay, Mr. Deloney, we hear you, we hear you, we get you, we get you, we get you. And, uh, you know, it was funny, thinking back, it was like, okay, yeah, you think you heard me this time, <laughs> but you gonna hear you're going to hear, hear, what I, hear what we have to say and whatnot. And, uh, uh, and they did, uh, they, yeah. they heard you. And you know, uh, you know, uh, to, to say the less, rest is history. You know, the history continues. But in 1992, yep. they finally closed the campus. Uh, yeah, yeah. And 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 the beauty of all of that, the beauty of it all, is that in 1992, I earned this this degree. You graduated. I, got, I graduated in 1992. What a year. Close, close <laughs> what a year, it out, my friend. Close it out with a bang. Wow, wow. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a way to tie, tie it up, you know. And, uh, and I have to tell you, I think uh, all of us, you know, uh, leading meaningful lives, uh, you know, we just all wish we have the opportunity to leave a legacy. And, and your legacy is that among other things uh, that you've done in your life, uh, 30 years later, right? This yeah. is like the 30th anniversary, January 17th, uh, yeah. 2022 is the right. 30th anniversary. That's quite a legacy, my friend. Thank you. Thank and so on behalf of the faculty, staff, and students, the community, all of us, and me personally, I, I, I thank you for, for taking those first steps, my friend, back in 1990, those first steps. Right on. All that, right all on. that, all that fear and that uncertainty, yeah. <laughs> you know, go, without seeing that full staircase, as we said, yeah. and and leading and leading today. So, yeah. you know, yeah. thank you so much for for sharing uh, your walk with all of thank us. You. Thank and you, thank you, thank you for having me. And Chancellor, like I said, in my book, A Stroke of Genius and and with and Great Expectations, I have written in that book that one day, <laughs> one day, that I'd be standing here and receiving uh, thanks from, uh, from the chancellor and whatnot, and you made it happen, man. All right, thank you, thank you, you my happen. friend.